Okay, we're going to go ahead and look at one more um, approximating area thing. This is a lot of times how you'll uh, see area approximated on an AP test, and it could be incorporated into a free response question. Um, usually, the data will have some meaning, like, you know, um, dealing with I don't know, people entering a stadium or something like that. But um, anyway, so I've given you a, a table of values here for a function h of x, and I've asked you to use that data to approximate the area under h of x from x equals 0 to x equals 7. And so I've said to use the subintervals indicated by the data in the table, um, and I should probably continue that, say, to determine the widths of your um, intervals. Um, but uh, then for part A, it's asking you to use three uh, left-hand rectangles, and then part B, three uh, trapezoids. So let's see here. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a quick um, sketch of what I know about this graph. Um, more room here. And it's not, uh, it's not necessary to do this if you uh, have an understanding of, um, you know, what you should be plugging in. But just to get a kind of a visual here, um, I'll go ahead and do this. So, let's see here, I need to go up to 10. And I need to go over to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so my first point is at 0, 5. My second point is at 2, 8, so 2, 8. My next point is at 3, 4. And my last point is at 7, 10, right up here. So that's all I know about the graph. They haven't told me anything else but that. So based on that, I've got to do this approximation. So for my left-hand rectangles, and again, you don't have to draw this out, but uh, just to get a kind of a visual here, um, if I were to draw this out, which I'm going to do, what it says, use the subintervals indicated by the data in the table, we can't have uh, intervals of equal width in this case, based on the data we're given. Um, it just doesn't work out. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the subintervals from 0 to 2, from 2 to 3, and from 3 to 7. So our first rectangle will have a width of 2, our second one will have the width of, width of 1, and our last one will have a width of 4. So our first rectangle goes from 0 to 2, so the left-hand endpoint is determined by the height at 0, which happens to be 5. So that means from 0 to 2, my left-hand rectangle is going to have a height of 2. From 2 to 3, 2 is the left-hand endpoint, so the height at 2 is 8. So my next one is going to be a little skinny rectangle with a height of 8. Next one goes from 3 to 4. I'm going to use 3 to determine the height, the, the, the height at 3 to determine the height, so, which is 4. And I go ahead and I make my last rectangle. So there's my four, uh, three rectangles. Now I just go ahead and I am going to, so here's the answer to part A, um, find the area of those. So the first one has a width of 2, and it has a height of 5. So a width of 2 times a height of 5. Our next one has a width of 1 times a height of 8. So 1 times 8. And our last one has a width of 2, 3, 4, and a height of 4. So then I can add those up. It's going to be 10 plus 8 plus 16. So let's see here, that's um, 24, that's 34. Okay, so we get, using three left-hand rectangles, we get that that area is approximately 34. Even though we don't know what the graph looks like, we can still approximate what the area under it would be. Okay? Now using rect, or using uh, trapezoids, um, things are going to look a little different, and I'll just go ahead and use the same graph here. Um, the first one is going to go uh, from 0 to 2 still. We're still using the same subintervals. Um, so like I said in the previous one, what you do is essentially you're going to make your dot at each endpoint. So at the, end, the first endpoint would be 0, and there's already dots on here, and at 2, the height is at uh, 8, it gave us that. And you're going to connect those two, okay, and that will be our trapezoid for our first one. So this line right here, um, I'll just erase that because we don't need that anymore. That was for our left-hand rectangle. <clears throat> From 2 to 3, you say, okay, with the height, here's the height at 2, here's the height at 3, draw my line between those. And I'll erase that. That was meant for my left-hand rectangle. And now I have um, my second trapezoid. My last trapezoid from 3 to 7. Here's my height at 3. Here's my height at 7. Connect that line between those two. Bring that down. And there we go. I have my last trapezoid. So that's how I would draw those out to find the area of those. So the first one. So I have, this is base 1. This is base 2. So it's going to be 5 plus 8. Since that's a height of 5, that's a height of 8. The distance in between the two bases is the height, which is 10, I'm sorry, which is 2, and then for the formula, I have to divide by 2. For the next one, 
Base 1 is going to be, you know, indicated by up here, is 8. Base 2 is going to be 4. So it's um, 8 plus 4. The height distance between the bases is going to be 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2. And for my last one, my uh, at 3, the height is 4. At 7, the height is 10. So let's see here. 3, the height is 4. And the height is 10, so those are the bases. That's base 1 and base 2. The distance in between the bases is 4. And I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 2. And um, you know, then I have to work this out. Bear with me for a second here. So, see so those will cancel out, so that'll leave me with 13. Um, that's going to be 12 divided by 2, which is 6. That's going to be 14 times 2 when those cancel, so that's going to be 28. Oh gosh, so let's see here. That's going to be... Um, 19 plus 28, which is going to be uh, 47, I believe. If I'm wrong on my math, I apologize. Um, I think that's right, though. So, anyways, there you go. That is, uh, you know, a typical you know way that you'll have to deal with approximating area with a table like that.